every time I talk about how bad Bill Maher has gotten, it's like he takes this as a challenge. And I absolutely am not under the illusion that he's watching my show, but it's like he keeps devolving. And just when you think that, you know, he's bottomed out, he can't get any worse than this, he really says something even dumber than anyone could fathom that he would be saying. I mean, five years ago, to hear the way he talks about politics and Bernie Sanders and progressive policies, I wouldn't have believed that that's the same person. But here we are. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to play the clip for you. Um, when he says something very stupid, watch one of the panelists' face. Can I present a scenario? I think this might be one of those years where it's the, as the discussion Mike and I were having. It's that they can't get over that centrist versus socialist thing. So Elizabeth Warren at some point takes Bernie's voters. He drops out. It's Warren and Biden. But and they go to the convention and it's deadlocked. This has happened before in American yeah. politics and they need a compromise candidate. I'm looking hard at Amy Klobuchar. You yeah. know why? Because, like... This is not an insult, Amy Klobuchar. I like you, but when they put generic Democrat on yeah. the ballot, they win. So if you don't have a, fa but Bill, you know, she's a but woman, Bill. so like that you know helps. That wins. moves a lot but with the a a a wokesters, and then she's. Why a do you think that economic populism, whatever you want to call it, socialism, democratic socialism, etc., Medicare for all, is so unpopular when a poll just came out that had Bernie Sanders beating Trump in Texas by more than any of the other candidates. The last 20 polls have shown Bernie Sanders beating Trump. And here's the other thing, though. Meaning? Meaning that you don't need a centrist to win. Centrism is why we have lost. It's why we lost well, a thousand first state of, house yeah. seats. It's why we lost the White House. We ran a centrist. But, but, but we he, lost. But, but even the centrists in the Democratic Party are pretty far left. <laughs> <laughs> So the look on Crystal Ball's face, I think <laughs> she really represented how we all felt watching him make that idiotic point. I mean, there's like multiple layers to why that's not just a bad idea, but it's downright stupid. So first of all, let's say hypothetically speaking, this scenario plays out where it comes down to Biden and Warren and they're deadlocked. First of all, he is actually saying, rather than going for the top two choices in this hypothetical scenario, we should go with the candidate who's polling at like 2% instead. That is an absolutely moronic thing to say in and of itself because it's antithetical to democracy. That would be superdelegates openly choosing whoever they want unilaterally. Do you not think that that would demoralize the base, Bill? Second of all, to say that Amy Klobuchar, of all people, is the compromise candidate between Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren shows that he just doesn't care about policy at all because she is the female Joe Biden. So in what way does she embody any of the principles that Bernie Sanders and even Elizabeth Warren are espousing? In what way? What does she even stand for? Bill, can you name a single policy that sets her apart from Joe Biden? Can you name one? Because she's not talking about policies. She is pitching herself as, well, I was going to say a moderate, but she actually self-identifies as a progressive still, hilariously enough. But, you know, in the same vein as Hillary, she is basically saying, I'm a progressive who's practical and I like to get things done. And that's good enough for Bill. Because she self-identifies as a progressive, even if she is politically moderate, that's good enough for Bill to say, you know what, she's a compromise candidate. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Bill Maher used to be someone who offered unique political insight, and now he is one of the worst pundits. In fact, I don't know if he's one of the worst, or just that, you know, he fell so far, right? Because everyone on mainstream news... They say idiotic things. They, you know, they do apologia for the Democratic Party establishment and the political elite class. But Bill Maher, he was really different. You know, he supported Bernie in 2016, even if he was very dismissive of Bernie's chances. But now it's just like he's full mask off and he seems to have contempt for Bernie Sanders. He hasn't even brought Bernie Sanders back since he, you know, announced that he's running again, and unless I'm forgetting, you know, an appearance, but I mean, 
It's just, it's embarrassing. And Crystal Ball brought up the point that I would have absolutely brought up. She said, we don't need a centrist to win. Centrism is why Democrats have lost more than a thousand seats in state legislatures across the country. How do you not grasp this yet, Bill? How do you not grasp this? And I'm so glad that Crystal Ball was on the panel to make that point and push back because Bill Maher, Oftentimes, he surrounds himself with Republicans and corporate Democrats and Democratic Party strategists who think the same way. They're all in that same bubble, so they aren't, you know, as likely to push back. But Crystal Ball, thankfully, was there to point out how dumb of a strategy that was. But then how does he respond to Crystal Ball? He says even centrists in the Democratic Party are far left. I don't even know what to say to that. His perception of the Overton window from the standpoint of someone who used to be progressive is far right. It's right wingers who think that centrist Democrats are far left. But in actuality, when you compare the Democratic Party to the average left wing party anywhere in Europe or throughout the world in Latin America, they are to the right. There are probably more similarities between uh, the conservative UK party and Democrats than there are between Republicans and Tories. Maybe that's not necessarily the case now with Boris Johnson as prime minister. But still, when you compare them to average left wing parties, they are far to the right. And basically the way that the Overton window is sitting in the United States is we have two right-wing parties. One is a far-right party, an extremist party, the Republican Party, that is, you know, more aligned with UKIP and these fringe right-wing parties you see in uh, Europe than they are with any normal conservative party. And then we have a center-right party or a centrist at best in Democrats. Now, thankfully, there's been an effort to push that Overton window back to the left, but that's still, you know, <laughs> the overwhelming majority of Democrats they are very much centrist to center right. I mean, Chris Coons was on Fox News talking about how maybe we would be justified if we uh, bombed Iran, if they really were culpable for this Saudi oil attack. I mean, in what world are centrist Democrats far left? You honestly think that Joe Manchin is a far leftist, Bill? I mean, the things that he says, it's, it's baffling to think that he believes it after you listen to him just from like, what, five to six years ago. It was him who was saying we need a left-wing equivalent of the Tea Party. And now he's saying the complete opposite. Now he's saying, you know, anyone who's a far leftist who's too pure, they can go fuck themselves with a locally grown organic cucumber. After he said, no, we really need a left-wing Tea Party. The man is an absolute fraud and a joke. And I don't know how anyone can still take him seriously, but his platform is large enough to where people do take him seriously. So I do think it's incumbent on us in indie media to push back against what he says. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>